Hi there and uh, welcome to another one of my video editorials. I'm Richard Lewis, a long-standing esports journalist of about 10 years experience, give or take. And I don't often make New Year's resolutions, as you can probably tell by my uh, terrible physique. But uh, there was one I did want to make, and that was to do something and address the state of esports journalism uh, and how it pertains specifically to League of Legends and inarguably the biggest esport at the moment. Um, so let's talk about that. First off, I think we can all agree that we've come quite a long way in esports journalism, um, in particularly League of Legends, in quite a short space of time. If we were to rewind back to 2010, 2011, a lot of the articles that were being produced and published were fluff. I, w I think it's fair to describe them as. There certainly wasn't a lot of in-depth digging. There wasn't a lot of investigative pieces, if any at all. There wasn't a lot of uh, leaks surrounding big moves, big transfers. Uh, it was effectively a lot of in-game analysis, guides... Uh, in breakdowns of games, why player X is good, and interviews. If you fast forward to where we are now, you can see we've got a very diverse selection of different types of content, uh, and this can be stuff like what I do, you know, embargoed news, where you know I'll break a story before anyone else, or perhaps reveal something that people didn't want revealed, uh, you know, at all. It could be. Uh, an editorial, an opinion piece, which certainly were uh, not really considered suitable to write or worth writing because of all the inevitable problems that come with writing opinion pieces, which I won't bore you with. I'm sure we're all more than aware now in 2015 of what they are. And, and now, you know, again, people are even doing historical pieces, uh, placing players within some broader context and about their contribution to the sport as a whole. It's great. But ultimately, what you guys have done is you've created a very limited number of sacred cows, if you like, of journalists that are placed way above and beyond all the other journalists that make a contribution to the scene. And actually, you treat those other writers those other journalists appallingly there's no doubt about it you 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 absolutely uh, you, you know you place people like myself and thorin and, and and other writers on a pedestal and our stuff always makes the front page any other writer addresses a particular topic you discredit them you say they're not real journalists you say they must be wrong they have an agenda you downvote it and it's very discouraging for those writers so I wanted to address this because the most important thing about any sport is to have a diverse set of media, people with different opinions, different styles, uh, working in different mediums. This is how sports grow. Uh, and this is why it's kind of, uh, what's the word, counterintuitive of Riot to try and make their hub the centralized form of reporting that we all go to. They're pre-approved, pre-screened, pre-packaged, hermetically sealed reporting, which uh, all has the blessing of the organizations. That's not going to help anyone long term. So you guys, as always, are your worst enemy. Always. So here's something I specifically want to address. I want to talk about the people who hate, which is such a strange term. You know, you don't, you don't know me. You don't know me from any, you know this vague persona this small insight into who i am as a human being but you make value statements based on that and that's perfectly fine i mean i probably do the same it's it's human nature but to the people who hate myself and, and thorin i'm going to give you a gift as well in 2015 i'm going to tell you guys how you can make people like me and thorin go away Okay, how you can get rid of us if you if you really think we offer nothing of value to the scene, to the community, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Here's how you get rid of us. Okay, so it's not even you don't need to boycott our stuff. 
because I know you can't do that. You don't have the self-discipline or the self-control. Uh, you absolutely have to click on it to see what we're saying so you can hate us some more. It's what we call the Howard Stern effect. Uh, but that's fine, okay? You don't even need to do that. It, it's real easy. You promote other writers. You promote our competition. Absolutely true. That's all you need to do. Uh, for some reason, you guys seem to think that the best way to get rid of me and Thorin or any other personality you dislike in esports is if it was some game of Big Brother, you know, where you can just vote people out of an industry that you don't like, uh, which is especially retarded, I must say. But um, you, uh, all your, what you guys presume to do is to go onto social media and tweet nasty things at us. Or to go into a Reddit thread and write lies and make fallacious statements about us. Uh, that's not going to help. That's the intellectual equivalent of the morons in TV land who send hate mail to the stars in soap operas because they play a villain. It's ridiculous. It's, it's not going to change anything. We still wake up. We still have jobs. We, we, we still remain uh, the, the people way out in front in our field. So how do you change it? You support these other writers, and I'm going to talk about some of the other writers in a moment. Uh, that's what you do. You push people up. You don't drag us down. You push people up. That's that's fact. You can you can look at, uh, for example, uh, streaming. How this model works. When, when one streamer is popular out in front, it's not a sudden dip in his popularity that sees them tumble down and lose numbers and become irrelevant it's the fact somebody else overtakes them and then people start gravitating towards them and the knock-on effect is they get less viewers they become less relevant blah 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 push you, you push people up you don't drag them down okay so let's talk about uh, why this is important to me specifically and I, I know on my last video I did rabbit on for an hour and I thanked all uh, thanks to the 15,000 16,000 people that Stood, stood through that uh, stood through that so I'm gonna try and keep this quick but uh, I mentioned in that video I was talking about summoners in a German website with I'll be honest not a lot of uh, pedigree uh, but they broke the XPK story they were the people that had the balls to go out and publicly put out that XPK wanted to leave Fnatic which was I mean we all knew Right, like anybody who was worth their salt in the League of Legends community knew. All the players knew, all the reporters knew, but it kind of seemed a little bit far fetched. Like this had almost happened before in the past, where he uh, wanted to create his own brand. There was talk about it with the, the manager called Harry Wiggett at the time. This is what effectively led to Harry no longer being in Fnatic, and it nearly happened, but it didn't. So we were all kind of thinking, well, maybe it'll go that way again. And, of course, this time it didn't. Now, some of us in were the first people to break that story. And when it went onto the front page of the League of Legends subreddit, you crucified them. You absolutely crucified them. You said they were just doing clickbait, the most ridiculous term ever. You, none of you guys understand it. Stop using that term uh, because, either by your definition, everything's clickbait. If you use a title that induces you to read the rest of the article, it's clickbait. That isn't what clickbait is. Okay, so stop using it until you can educate yourselves about what it actually is, because that's a pet peeve of mine, and you really should stop it. It, it, it uh, undermines your own arguments. Anyway, you accused them of clickbait, you accused them of being uh, not well-connected enough. It, it wasn't a particularly well-written piece, so people attacked their English as if this somehow meant that the veracity of what they were saying wasn't, wasn't uh, accurate. Uh, you know, it was in question. Ridiculous, ridiculous hate that they got for that. And there they were, having the balls that other reporters didn't. As simple as that, myself included. I was just like, you know what, I, I don't really want to touch this right now. As soon as the Summoner's In story broke, I went, validated it, published it, and everyone went, oh, all hail Richard Lewis, he's done it again. Well, no, I actually did nothing. Another journalist laid the groundwork. I asked a few questions you know, that's that's how it works sometimes. It's not fair that I get the credit for breaking that story. Someone has in absolutely deserve it. So there's a bunch of writers out there which you need to start supporting, whether it's because you want to get rid of the the status quo, the people you don't like, or whether it's simply because you believe, like I do, in a diverse uh, press. 
and I'm going to tell you about one of my one of my uh, co-workers first first and foremost, William Turton. Now you hate William Turton, obviously. Every time William Turton publishes a story, you go, "Oh, William Turton, this guy again!" I hate his Twitter feed. It's so you know, like you must be one of the. 400 500 followers he's got every time it's incredible how many people can talk about his twitter output without actually following him it, it's it's very interesting but anyway every time it come, every time his name gets brought up oh he's not reliable substantiate that claim please because i'm going to tell you about a guy who as far as i am aware from every story he's touched he has broken uh with about a 90 plus percent accuracy on these stories i can think of maybe two instances where it was wrong and one of those was right at the time and i fed him that story okay so if any if anyone's to blame for that it's it's me um i didn't have time to uh completely do my due diligence passed it off to another writer this happens often you, you know if i haven't got the time to, to bring a story all the way over the line i pass it off to another writer and then it changed it changed at the last minute something i might have picked up on but 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 william unfortunately didn't so i feel a little bit aggrieved actually a little bit aggrieved about the way that that went anyway let me tell you about william turton this is a guy right who you say isn't fit to write about league of legends do you know what he did over christmas you know this big sony hack the big Sony hack with all the emails. Yeah, he he got those emails. He he got them. He's been going through them and and uh, you know breaking actual news stories that that are huge that have a context completely outside of esports. Not only that, when Lizard Squad were hacking everyone over Christmas, who gets an interview with a member of Lizard Squad? It's William Turton, this guy who's not fit to write about League of Legends, according to you guys. So he's out there breaking these big stories and getting a lot of love and respect from his editors and the staff at the Daily Dot. And you guys, and everybody writes about League of Legends, ah, fuck this guy. What do you think's going to happen? Let's follow this through. Let's follow this through intellectually, uh, if we can. Uh, what do you think's going to happen? Every time he writes something about you know cybercrime, technology, it blows up, it gets loads of traffic, everyone's really happy. Every time he writes about League of Legends, you all shit on him, make him feel bad, and you downvote his work. Where do you think he's going to go? Boom. Of course, he's going to go to the fucking cybercrime and the technology reporting, and we lose one of the young reporters that has the best news instincts, probably of any reporter I've worked with in 10 years. And again, I shouldn't need to say this, but because people think I'm evil and I never do anything good, I have brought up loads of uh, reporters and trained them when I've been working as an editor and, 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 and helped them get where they want to go. I pride myself on it. I think I have a responsibility to do it. I like being a mentor to young people in esports. You know, the experienced veterans in this industry need to do more of that. The next generation are what's going to help the growth of our business. Yet lots of people don't do it because they're you know insecure and don't want competition. Competition's always good. It's always good. Uh, so I know on gamers fucked him over a little bit when they published uh, that that he used a quote from Broken Shard. It was obviously my friend and colleague from the First Blood series. He used a quote without permission. It was a misunderstanding. On gamers put it out there publicly that he'd been punished and he had. They halved his money over that. Um, and then he was put on notice. He wasn't allowed to publish stories until one of the senior writers gave it approval. So all that actually happened was William would do all the groundwork, pass it to one of the senior writers at On Gamers, and they'd either publish the story and take the credit, or they wouldn't be bothered about it, and the story wouldn't get published, and someone else would get it. So William Turton got absolutely fucked over and not supported by the, the the people he worked for and now he gets fucked over by you guys in turn because of it it's ridiculous support this guy seriously if you want a good investigative writer somebody that can turn over the stones who is free from bias because obviously richard lewis you can't trust him right he hates all these people blah 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 if you want somebody to replace what i do that's the guy you go and support end of discussion there's nobody close there's nobody close so him, 
what when I first broke in this industry and, and started getting a name for myself around about the time of the super team, no one cared about any of my interviews. Uh, people got a bit upset about the Chaos editorial, but then went back to ignoring me in League of Legends. Uh, I, what really helped me cement my position with you guys was breaking all these stories about transfer rumours. It became a thing. Richard Lewis, when he says it, it is true because of my incredibly high batting average when it comes to leaking stories, especially about rosters. Well, there's a forgotten man in all of this. There's a forgotten man. Josh Raven, young writer at uh, Esports Heaven. Again, a writer who's on the threshold of leaving the industry because it, he can't make enough money from it. And he, he, every time he leaks a story now, everyone shits on him. When we had that streak at Esports Heaven, 50% of it, 60% of it, maybe, you know, but I'm happy to say 50, was me. And the other 50% was this guy. And there were times he fed me stuff. And again, you know, that's how it works. He was like, oh, I can't bring this over the line, but you know the manager of that organization. Can you ask them? And he'd give me a story and I'd go out and I'd get it. This guy was invaluable to breaking all of that stuff. Um, he is, you know, juiced in uh, with, with uh, a lot of players. He's worked as a volunteer in, in this industry. He hears things. He, you know, gets asked his opinion. His opinion is valued. So he knows... Uh, a lot about what's going on. Do you guys care about that? Evidently not. Evidently not. In fact, recently, I think he announced the Origin bot lane. Uh, about, you know, that Miffy was going to buy for them. And Miffy attacked him. And tried to make it look like he wasn't really going there. In, in what the most transparent and obvious move uh, for quite some time. Arguably, it's up there with Nuke Duck and Rock Out. We all knew as soon as Mithy was unbanned, if he was getting unbanned, and of course that was debatable for a while, he'd end up at Origin. That was the first choice. That's who they wanted. That was where he was going to go. So, Josh Raven puts it out in public. We go through the same old cycle, the same old bullshit. Sorry, Josh, we don't know who you are. You haven't got an established name in this business, so we're going to downvote you. What you're saying must be untrue. You have no credibility here, uh, so go fuck yourself. Then Miffy comes out and says, I wish journalists wouldn't publish this stuff, and makes it, you know, words his tweet in a way, I haven't got the exact wording to hand, but words it in a way that makes it look like he's not joining, but not so definitively that he can't turn around and say, ah, oh, but what I meant was, when he announces he joins, and players and managers do this shit all the time, and you guys give them a free pass. When they lie publicly and attack journalists, you you always side with the players and managers. And when they're proven that they're lying, you just, ah, yeah, that's all in the game. It ain't all in the game. You don't have to lie. Two fucking words. No comment. That's all you have to say. You don't need to attack the credibility of a journalist. At all. Ever. You don't need to do that. Uh, but you support them for doing it. So Josh Raven, another forgotten man. Uh, the guy who got my job at Esports Heaven chap called Drexin, slaved away at Gosu Gamers. Uh, Michael Drexin Lala is his full name. Slaved away at Gosu Gamers, doing, you know, really solid, uh, you know, good, readable content, the history of the game, talking about teams, transfer moves, historical context. Kind of like, all you know, some of his articles are almost like a... a um, what's what? A diet Thorin. A diet Thorin. Think of it like that. They're not quite as verbose, they're not quite as lengthy, but you, you get the message. Uh, and he's the guy who got my job. He was one, he, when I drew up the shortlist, when I was leaving Esports Heaven, I wanted suitable candidates to go in there. I deemed him to be one of those candidates. He's a great, uh, staff person. You know, he's really good at managing people. He's a great man manager. He's great at keeping people motivated and encouraging people and bringing in new blood into the industry and giving them the, uh, what's the word, the enthusiasm, the motivation to want to continue in light of all of the stuff we've talked about. Okay. So, and, and he's a good writer to boot. I think most recently you would know his, uh, he did a piece about TSM and, and the, the history of TSM, I think it was. So again, this guy, su support this guy, not just for his writing, but actually because he's now the gatekeeper to getting volunteers into published work. Support him. Simple as that. You probably don't even know his name. Now, 
there's another chap as well called uh, Duraven, and uh, you know, and, and I, I've known Nilo a while. I think again, this is a guy who's got really good investigative instincts. Is a guy who is like kind of the head uh, of League of Legends output, I think, on gamers currently, and he's held back at on gamers. He's held back because on gamers have had this turbulent time. I don't think I'm revealing any trade secrets to talk about this. The site wide ban on Reddit really hurt them. Losing Slasher and Thorin, it really hurt them. Nilu is out there doing, you know, he's out there, he hustles hard, man. Like, that's one of the best things you can have as a journalist is hustle. Uh, to be just out there talking to people all the time and, oh, what's going on and how are you and got anything for me today? And a good journalist never stops having those kind of conversations. And Nilu embodies that, you know, embodies that perfectly. Now, he works at a publication, they don't want to annoy any teams. They don't want to break any news that's going to come back and bite them in the ass. They have agreements with teams and, it, you know, they do these, like, kind of like what uh, LOL Esports are doing at the moment. They're almost doing, like, joint press releases. They have an agreement not to publish stories. I know this happens. I know on gamers they know about something for a week and they don't tell you about it. They don't publish it because they don't want to annoy the people it's about. It's insane. That's not how journalism works. And, and, and for a long time, they were the pinnacle and the peak of journalism. And now look where they are. And Nilly, this guy, with his, he knows everything that's going on. He's well juiced in. He could give me a run for my money. You know, like really push me all the way. Like push me and William Turton when it comes to breaking news all the way. He just so happens to be in a place he can't do it. And he can't make any money anywhere else. You know, all these other avenues that are open to writers uh, for freelance... It's all ad. It's all ad rev based, traffic based revenue, and you all use ad block. So he can't even say, "Well, I ain't going to work at on gamers no more because they're shutting me down." Because it's a steady paycheck, even though he'd probably much rather be breaking all of these stories. And again, this boils down to you guys. You won't support them in the right way. So you need to start supporting Deraven. At this point, I'll talk about Paravine now. I got, a, I got a bit of a mixed relationship with Paravine, I won't lie. Some of their staff have been a bit weird with me in the past. Um, you know, I, I said earlier in this uh, address that competition is good. I think some people take competition a little bit too seriously. Uh, and that, that's probably where I'll leave it. You don't need to be like, we're going to fucking fuck you over. and we're gonna do. You don't need to you know, do that. You don't need to... Be that aggressive. Just break the news. Just do good work. It'll speak for itself. That, that that's that. But Paravine, everyone, you know, Paravine's a great blog. Uh, it's a great place to go and get published. I think the standard is uh, good, considering, uh, it, you know, it, and not only that. I, I think it's fair to say that the diversity, the types of article they publish there, is is incredibly good. You know, it's it's very good. Uh, but Paravine. Any writers who work there, they get paid basically the ad block return minus, you know, server fees and everything else. And a lot of writers who publish there, they say, man, you know, I, I had this article, it blew up on the front page. I still made next to no money from it. It, it was really probably not worth the six to eight hours I put into researching this article to get $20 or whatever back. And again, that boils down to you guys the ad block issue but not not only that just having that sense of responsibility that this is a publication we want to support this is a publication we actually want to exist and we want to thrive and all you need to do is just turn ad block off click on there read an article 20 minutes of your time and that's a page impression and a page impression with an ad thing you know you can look at where the ads go you know look i i, I hate ads and i've been a massive proponent of ad block actually i've been an advocate of ad block as a, a consumer right in the past because i hate those pop-up ads as well where it's like smash an iphone with a hammer and it's just yeah you have to take your fucking headset off and it's horrible and there's scream screaming going on. it's just a nightmare it's like being in the middle of a riot but unfortunately those types of ads exist and those types of ads get people paid and we need to think about who it who we're getting paid you know if it was a big company 
with a massive turnover, yeah, use our blog. Fuck those guys. Get better ads. Get better partnership. Think about how you can be a better business. Do some consultancy work. Whatever you need to do. Um, but if it's if it's a small blog, you don't get to pick what ads you have on there. If the ads suck, you, uh, it, it, everyone hates it. You know, I, we do something similar at Think Piece. You know, it's just what ads you get or what ads you get. And it's up to you guys to be like, well, okay, that's irritating, but there's there's a greater good being served here. And I, again, I never say that. I never tell people to turn our block off. I, I, in fact, when I'm streaming, I say, look, if you want to put our block on, put our block on. I don't, I don't really care. I don't need the money. But what what we do need the money for is reporting, is supporting journalists in the industry. We need people to have options of where they can publish and it still be economically viable. Now, hang on, I'll just take another swig of coffee. My first pick uh, for the job at Esports Heaven was Kelsey Moser. Right? I make no bones about it. This is probably going to taint uh, anything I, I in future say about them, maybe about this LPL situation, anything like that. But I think I want this out there as a matter of public record. I have absolute faith and confidence that she is a fantastic writer and has... Uh, a level of insight that not many other writers do. I think she understands the the industry. I think she's incredibly uh, intelligent. I think her writing is very succinct. And I think that actually a lot of aspiring journalists, uh, perhaps not a lot of people look at her work because she's female and it's a very male-orientated industry. People should look at her work and seek to emulate it because a lot of it is incredible. Uh, now, she was my first pick to take over my job at Esports Heaven, but she elected not to. She even went so far as to say in the interview that we conducted that she feels uh, Drexin would, like Drexin deserves it more and perhaps would be a better candidate. And that's the level of selflessness from this individual. Now, recently, she's had a rough ride. There's been a lot of bad things said about her, but the, the, the fact remains... She is a vibrant voice in our reporting landscape right now, and we need to support her. Like, I want to see more Kelsey Moser work. She's freelancing all over the place right now. We're looking to uh, you know, get some of her pieces on the Daily Dot. I really rate her as a writer. Yet whenever this question of esports journalists and who's good and who's this and who's that comes up, her name never gets mentioned, and it's really sad. You guys are missing out in a big way. So, again, I urge you to just support these people. Read their articles. That's all you have to do. Like, read. I'm not saying read one and then, oh, I didn't like that, and, and I'm never going to read them again. Not that. Read a handful, cross-section. It, it takes no time at all. Read it, get a feel for what they're about as a, as a, as a reporter, as a writer, as a columnist, whatever. And just to make a decision. This is for me. This isn't for me. And if it is for you, support them. Not religiously, but just be sure to read their work. If you see their work being promoted somewhere, share it. Let other people know. Introduce your friends to it if you think they may, may like it. That's all you have to do. This is not rocket science. It's not even time consuming. You guys can make a difference in this particular instance. And as I've said, there is many motivations to do this. Final thing I really want to talk about. Punditry. I don't think you guys have a uh, particular um, handle on punditry. And uh, I'm going to read you the definition. A pundit sometimes also called a talking head, is a person who offers to mass media their opinion or commentary on a particular subject, most typically political analysis, uh, the social sciences, technology, or sport, on which they are knowledgeable or can at least appear to be knowledgeable or considered a scholar in said area. Now, that... Uh, might It's a bit of a mouthful. It's quite a verbose, uh, an overblown definition but you guys have really got to understand pundits exist now league of legends is big enough punditry is real we are going to get pundits now thorin is both a journalist and a pundit 
Okay, Thorin researches this game because he used to not research it. He, he didn't really care when it kind of first came out and then slowly it won him over. And now he's one of the most prominent historians and, the, you know, uh, writers in this about this particular esport. He'll never replace Brood War for him. He's a Brood War fanatic. I, it, I've never got there myself. I never really, the game never really appealed to me. I much prefer League of Legends. But, you know, Thorin is still far superior than me, for example, in breaking down the history of the game and placing things in context because he's researched it. He cares enough to research it. But he's a pundit as well. So when he sits there and he's tweeting and says, ah, that was a really bad play by this guy or this team have made an incredibly bad decision uh, on recruiting this player, you can't separate the two and go, well, I think it's great that Thorin writes all these articles, but fuck his Twitter persona. Let's drive him out. That's punditry. Uh, he, pundits are entitled to an opinion. All the groundwork he does here, all this writing that he does, all this research he does, that validates and gives him the right to have an opinion about this thing. Now, you guys, when it comes to punditry, if you're a if you're a nice person and your punditry is worded in such a way so as not to be critical, you support it totally. So, for example, if Crepo goes on Twitter and says, "Hey guys, I know CLG lost, but real talk." Don't be too mean to them. Everyone goes, oh, well, isn't that a nice statement by, by Crepo? He's saying, actually, the social media hate uh, is quite bad and does affect players. And we need to re respect that and give these players distance after a particularly bitter defeat. Good on Crepo. Now, that's fine. I, I, I imagine if Crepo came out and said CLG were terrible and Link really should think about standing down and Dexter was ineffective or whatever it whatever it was, people would be like, you know, doesn't compute. We we used to nice Crepo. He said something. Now, just because the opinion is worded in a particular way that maybe doesn't sit easy with you, isn't palatable, doesn't mean that their opinion is suddenly invalid. They're the same person. They have the same level of expertise. They have the same level of insight. So this is punditry. It's not always going to be what you like. In fact, it's not about you. It's not about you at all. Punditry, just it's, it's, it's about the individual providing their opinion in a public space because they want to. And then it's up to you know, media outlets or, or people who want to get karma on Reddit or whatever it is to proliferate and spread that opinion. It's not really about you. It's about the individual. You offer an opinion because you feel compelled to do it based on your standing in the industry and based on what you think is important at any given time. So when you reject punditry, when you attack people for having opinions that they're perfectly entitled to have, what you're effectively saying is this: per the only grounds on which to attack somebody's opinion is if the opinion is invalid, if they have no level of expertise, if they're stupid or biased or have an agenda. Now, nobody could level that at Thorin. You all love his work. It's there on the front page every day. Everyone says the best thing that ever happened to Thorin was, you know, uh, not to be an on-gamers anymore. He, you know, he's off the leash. He can go nuts. And look what he's done. Look how he, he's all this great content he's created, self-employed. But when he says, oh, you know, Wild Turtle played that really retarded, there's an apoplexy. How dare you say that? Well, he dares because his opinion is valid. And he knows what he's talking about. And the evidence is there. It's, it's insane that you guys can't understand what punditry actually is and with that in mind i want to talk about froskerin again had a terrible time uh recently with the whole lpl en uh, stream and riot kind of consolidating that now froskerin uh gets so much hate and abuse and vitriol because of one thing and one thing only and that is that because she's so dedicated to the chinese region because she understands the chinese region so well it's to the detriment of other regions i think even she would admit that so she went on a show and she said something about yellow star and leona and morgana and it, it was it was wrong it was incorrect it was you know outdated information if you like and that gets brought up every time. Oh, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Well, she does. She's one of the most prominent uh, and, 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 and well-versed uh, well thinkers when it comes to the Chinese scene. Like, few people will eclipse her for level of knowledge. So why does this one comment invalidate all of that? 
She's a pundit. We should respect her opinion. We should support her opinion. She's not a journalist like these other people. Punditry and journalism are two different things. But her casting, her work, her dedication to the scene, her research, it gives her opinion weight. And you can be wrong. <laughs> Opinions can be wrong. You can say something and be like, oh, well, actually, based on the information I had to hand at the time, I expressed an opinion that looking back, I regret. I'd like, to, and I have revised my opinion since. Doesn't matter for you guys. Just doesn't matter. It happened once, so that's it. That now means that everything that person says, every phrase that comes tumbling out of their mouth is incorrect. It's it's you know repellent to you for some reason and just gets brought up over and over and over and over again. It's kind of like uh, in football when Alan Hansen, the match of the day pundit and former Liverpool defender and a very good one, a very successful one at that, said um in you know about manchester united when they had all of these youth players coming through and and they sold some big name stars he said well uh, they lost on the opening day i think to aston villa it might have been and he said you don't win anything with kids you don't win anything with kids now that piece of punditry is true for the most part, you won't win anything with your youth or reserve team. No no team would openly have that philosophy. It just so happened Manchester United had the greatest ever youth team probably ever assembled outside of the Ajax youth team, uh, which went on to win a Champions League. Uh, they just so happen to have this golden generation of youth coming through. So 99% of the time, Alan Hansen's statement that you don't win anything with kids rings true. Not in this instance. They were world beaters. They were some of the best players England have ever produced, frankly. And they happened to win things. Now, is Alan Hansen completely redundant as a pundit? Did Match of the Day say after Manchester United won the title? You shit the bed there, Alan. Time to go. You, we can't use you ever again. No, they didn't. They understood that a lot of punditry is a percentage game. You can't be right all the time. You can only... Uh, you know, you can only express your opinion in generalities that more often than not are true. You use your experience to give that opinion. And in esports, and in particular League of Legends, if you're wrong once, you're wrong forever. It's ridiculous. It's got to stop. You need to be more mature about your application of uh, the, the reason and the logic. You know, people can be wrong. Being wrong once doesn't mean that you're wrong forever and it creates this culture of fear one of the reasons this ties back to the original point of, of the summoners in example one of the reasons why in both punditry and journalism people don't actually report what they hear and what they think they know to be true is because if it turns out to be wrong they know they'll be crucified forever and their career is over and you propagate that and it's got to stop. 2015, it's got to stop. And it's going to become increasingly important. We're seeing Riot now are saying for League of Legends that what they want to do is they want to have the LOL Esports hub as, again, this, this important, you know, the, the main area where people go for reporting, the most important site. They're working with all of the organizations and, and managers and team owners on how they can get better content. And they say they don't want to shut down third uh, party reporting, but by proxy that would be that would that would be one of the things that would slowly start to happen because how can you compete uh, uh you know a breaking news if the 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 uh teams are having this agreement with riot and saying well we'll give you all the information we'll tell you what we're doing they know about it they know about it first and then as soon as they say okay we're ready to pull the trigger on it and even sometimes like last night with the gravity gaming announcement uh they'll just they, they won't pull the trigger at the same time lol, lol esports will now that's great i think i think there's a place for lol esports obviously i'm not saying it shouldn't exist but you're not going to get anything hard hitting there there's a very clear agenda. I talk to writers from that site all the time, and they operate in a very uh, constrained fashion, you know, that, that which is offset by the, the amount of money they get paid, which is, you know, really good for the industry. So, if you want hard hitting reporting, you've got to get rid of this culture of fear, you know, and, and not crucify people for going out on a limb and presenting a story in their best possible fashion as, 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 as good as they can do at any given time. If it's wrong, it happens. I've been wrong. I've been wrong. People forget that. I've put stuff out there. It doesn't happen often. I think I've been wrong once or twice. But ultimately, 
it's going to happen to anybody and reporters hate it journalists hate it nobody wants to be wrong in public it's a very lonely place when people are criticizing you and laughing at you and you failed as a reporter because you had one job and that was to report facts and you got it wrong it's it's a awful it's an awful feeling i wouldn't wish it on any reporter even the ones that i don't like or respect that's how bad it is um so you guys need to again remove this culture of fear and uh, just a oh, I meant to mention as well. Uh, some of the attacks that you guys do when you don't like people's opinion, or, or again, this culture of fear. Some people take it incredibly far. So, for example, when Frost in after that summoning insight, uh, I think it was uh, appearance that incident that happened. She was DDoS. She had a, a personal information uh, leaked. Her credit card got hacked. I mean, insane levels of hate. The things that you would probably do to people that have committed atrocities, you know, appalling crimes, because she got something a little bit wrong about Yellow Star in his champion pool and what was strong in a region or whatever it was. It's it. it, it you got to put things in perspective. So if you're the kind of person that's doing that, or if you're the kind of person that thinks that's okay. You don't care about esports. You definitely don't care about journalism or punditry or anything. You're just a piece of shit, frankly. There's no getting away from that. Uh, so think think about it because you might not be someone who's going to do that, but you might be one of those people who goes on a forums and is super critical of somebody and you stir up this cauldron of hate. Well, in that cauldron, the extremists come in, the fanatics, the lunatics that that are protected by you know being anonymous on the internet they come in and they take it too far and you laid the groundwork for them to do that and so you have to take some responsibility i'm not saying don't criticize people no one is immune to criticism no one should be free from criticism but there's a re there's a reasoned way to balance your criticism and it certainly isn't well you said something i didn't like so fuck you and fuck everything you say in the future that's not what balanced criticism is Anyway, just to wrap this up, because I said I wasn't going to waffle too much, and you can probably tell a lot of this was from the hip. I want to just say if I left any great reporters out, if I forgot any names, I apologize wholeheartedly. There are some incredible reporters out there that I'm sure I haven't named, and you guys should do some digging and support them. Follow them on Twitter, make sure all of their work gets shared and spread around as much as possible. This is important, because... If you want the sport to grow, if you want League of Legends to be truly successful, truly successful, you need a vibrant and diverse media. Think about it. Think about all the sports that we know and how they flourished. It's about having multiple media outlets writing about your game. It's about having multiple broadcasting outlets bidding for the right to show your game. It's about opinions. It's about the man down the pub having an argument with another man down the pub about which striker is better. All of these things make a sport truly great. And League of Legends is in danger of losing that. Because the community, they don't want to support the people that are perhaps making uh, one of the most important contributions right now. Please change that in 2015. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you again.